Recently, I spent one week developing a full apartment scene in Blender. Creating, and then optimizing, a realistic, believable interior space was key to the scene's success. While the scene's design and added details were important, this video's focus will be on the methodology behind the project's realism. Now, the workflow here is aimed at Blender, but the ideas are still almost universal. So let's get started with the simplest idea, and that's the proper scaling of assets. Although the end viewer might not have brought a tape measure, incorrect scaling is the ability to dramatically reduce the quality of what might be an otherwise watertight environment. The worst thing about incorrect scaling is that simply eyeballing and estimating the scale of things almost never works, so it's helpful to get the average, real-world dimensions of your assets and then scale them accordingly in your scene, if you'd like to avoid accidentally minuscule doorknobs. Scaling is important. It doesn't matter if it's the width of the wood panels in the floor, or the height of the doorways, unless you're playing a source game, that is. Almost as important as proper scaling is ensuring the use of realistic geometry. In real life, there's no such thing as a sharp edge, unlike in polygon meshes where they seem to be the status quo. Unless you're going for the low poly look, which would defeat the point of adding realism, it's a good idea to smooth any visible sharp edges. There are different ways of doing this, but the two methods that I use most often are beveling and sculpting. These new faces will allow the light that would usually be restricted to just a single side to spill over the edges naturally. If needlessly having a ton of extra polygons in your models isn't your thing, baking the beveled or otherwise more physically accurate normals and applying them to the low-poly, sharp-edged model is a great alternative, and it's one that I use very frequently myself. To further enhance the flow of light in your scene, using physically accurate materials is helpful. In this development time-lapse, you can see the difference that they make in just the chair's fabric. The use of physically accurate materials should extend to the leaves of a potted plant all the way to the smallest wrinkles of a pillow. This ensures that the light interacts with objects the way the viewer would expect it to. Now this leads into unarguably the most important principle in adding realism, which is the lighting. Your lighting has the power to bring the intended atmosphere of your scene to life, and it can highlight some of its best parts. Unnatural lighting has the power to do the exact opposite of this, so avoiding unnatural lighting is critical. A good example of bad lighting is my very first attempt at a realistic interior render, where we're presented with a lamp that's somehow brighter than sunlight itself. For my current apartment scene, I also wanted to use natural warm sunlight, but this time it had to be done correctly. This meant that estimating the sun's brightness and its interaction with the atmosphere would be necessary. At its zenith, the sun's strength is 440 watts per meter squared, and indirect light from the sky is about 30 watts per meter squared. These are good starting values, but they'll need adjusting depending on the time of day. As the sun's distance to the horizon decreases, the atmosphere increasingly scatters shorter wavelengths, giving the sunlight a red-orange tint, and decreasing its intensity. With this in mind, I was able to find a fairly convincing sun strength and color for my apartment scene, which imbued it with a warm, inviting atmosphere, contrasted with cooler, ambient colors emanating from the sky. Additionally, post-processing effects should always be tastefully used to emulate the lens of a real camera. I always enable depth of field along with lens distortion, glare, and some level of tone mapping and color grading to enhance the mood. Altogether. Ensuring proper scaling, geometry, lighting, and post-processing can dramatically enhance the realism of your render. That's regardless of whether you're designing an interior environment explicitly for rendering, for real-time use, maybe for both. The principles discussed here will help tie it all together. If you want to see my finished renders, check out my Instagram in the description. If you'd like more information about the process of creating interior scenes like this one, check out my other video on interior scene design with Blender. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.